to the special call meeting to discuss the American Rescue Plan Act as an overview for the town of Edenton and the funding consideration for community outreach. Right, so Corey, I'll let you take over. Thank you, Mayor. Just to give everyone uh, kind of an update, thank you for being here and just a general overview of what the American Rescue Plan Act is. The Amer American Rescue Plan Act was established in March of 2021 um, by the federal government and allocated over $1.9 trillion towards the federal stimulus to aid the public health and economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Of these funds, the town of, of Edenton has received two installments, um, each valued at $735,235, or a grand total of $1.47 million in relief funding. Um, the first installment was utilized to help the town operational needs, um, and the second installment the council has determined should go towards community outreach and quality of life. So that's an overview of of the American Rescue Plan um, and how it impacted the town. Um, when we look at item uh, B <coughs> for funding considerations, um, one of the things that was provided tonight in the agenda um, are five potential items that could receive funding. Um, this is preliminary um, list of opportunities that we've explored. Um, none of these items are set in stone just yet. We do want to have a public forum when we consider generating this list and what costs and what funding um, that we should share uh, with the general public um, for uh, whatever outreach programs that they feel a need to include. If we look at the first one, which we're looking at an allocation of roughly $250,000 towards housing. Uh, one of the big, biggest impacts that the town of Edenton faced over the last two years, uh, COVID and post-COVID, uh, can be seen in local housing needs. Um, one of the things that um, we have seen a great need for um, is housing improvements, closing cost assistance, and potential new home sites for growth in our area. These have very much been restricted over the last um, 24 months. Um, the Town of Eaton staff has discussed options to, to address or at least help with these three problems that we've seen in our housing um, um, quantities and we have partnered with the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, um, to help them with some of their existing programs. Um, the existing programs that they have in place is the 502 and 504 program that we can partner with USDA to help with two of the housing problems. Um, the 504 program is designed to help homeowners with home improvements. Um, and the 502 program is designed to help with single family housing loans. Um, the last item would be um, to designate some type of closing cost assistance um, to help um, uh, firemen, police, EMS, public servants um, with uh, a closing costs associated with home ownership as well. Um, when we talk about the, the 504 program, that is uh, 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 up to $50,000 program that USDA offers, of which the first $10,000 is grant and the remaining 40,000 is a low income loan. Um, and so what we consider doing with USDA is any funding needs after that initial $10,000 is the potential to do up to $10,000 match with USDA through their vetting process, do upwards of $20,000 in home repair for low and moderately low income um, homeowners to help with needs that they may have. When we talk about the 504 program, um, this is a program that, or 502 program, excuse me, is des um, designed to help with single family homes. Um, at this time, we're working through some of the logistics of this. Um, this program is um, um, uh, used to um, build new construction homes. It has some of the same vetting requirements and income requirements that the 504 program uh, requires. Um, what uh, the town's goal is is to partner with the Edenshawn partnership for some of the opportunity that we have with vacant lots in town, potentially help uh, new homeowners find unoccupied lots that are uh, municipally owned to potentially be a source for new construction. Um, we can go into more details uh, uh, around that program um, in the near future. 
future. We have received most of the su supplemental documentation from USDA. We have those on file. Um, we haven't set a, a, a start date for applications or a deadline yet, um, but we did want initially to at least engage the public to let them be aware of those programs. Um, any questions around the house? Can, can I ask you a question yes. about that, about that final vote four? I'm getting approached by a lot of senior citizens that need work done to their houses, floors and stuff like that, insulation, bathroom floors are, are falling in. Uh, what would be the qualification for getting a loan like that? Well, it depends on income. It also depends on whether it's a, a single, um, homeowner or someone that's married or widow, it depends on where they are. Um, all that information is on file and readily available for the public at town hall. We have, um, we can sit down with any individuals who are interested in that 504 program, um, introduce them with the USDA rep and go ahead and at least have some initial conversations. There's quite a bit of information that's there, but we do have that on file that we can share with the general public. If someone's interested, they can. They can come to town hall. So I can just tell the people who are asking me to come down yes. and talk, talk to you about the 504? Yes. And both of these programs are um, geared towards owner occupied. These are owner occupied um, options. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions around the, the housing piece? Uh, is there any, any provision for teachers? I know you mentioned a lot of first responders. Is there any provision for um, our teachers? So we're trying to work out the details on the closing cost assistance program. There are some loans that are available out there that are 100% financed, but some folks still struggle with the closing costs associated with those loans. We're trying to work out the, the legal ramifications and protections of the town of what we can and can't do. We will be glad to share more information about what we are able to do for a uh, loan closing assistance program, which will be the third piece of this housing initiative by the town. So I don't have all the details at this time, but we are working with USDA and town council to try to figure out um, how we implement this program. And it should be along the lines of some type of um, self-paying loan, council and high. But they're not required to use a sole USDA. They can use uh, another financial institution or a lender for them. Is that right? uh, the only conversations we've had now have been with USDA. If there are other options out there, that's something we'll need to explore and bring them in so we can use them to help us with the vetting process. Said yet no. for, um, for people no. trying to get that 501? That, that's, that's correct. This is strictly informational to, to get the news out to the general public. Okay. Um, the second thing that we have uh, funding considerations that have um, been considered is a recycling trailer. If you remember back in uh, February of 2022, over three years ago, um, the town lost its recycling program. Um, since that time, we've been in conversations with North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality, working on grant opportunities to secure a second trailer um, for our Public Works Department to use. Um, the Public Works Director is still working with the EQ Waste Management Group on that. We have got the application together. Um, they do a 40, 000, up to $40,000 grant towards equipment purchases, um, and we feel confident that we should be able to find a, a nice, um, recycling trailer for us to use to restart our um, recycling program. So um, one of the things we've considered um, from the Mayor's Task Force group as well as some of the other um, comments that we've just received from the general public is that we'd like to see that recycling program and we feel like this is the quickest way to get that back going. What are these walking trailers made? It, it depends. Most of the ones we've looked at are either come out of a tide water area from some type of um, sales distributor, and we found ones closer to Charlotte. Um, but as far as where they're manufactured at, I, I don't know. So the goal of this is would be to use half of the town's funds and half of the state funds if awarded to, to purchase a new walking four trailer. 
Um, the third item was, excuse me, any questions around the recycling trailer? Just when we got a, oh, I'm sorry. When, when, uh, when is that grant application due and, and, and when do we get some word back? That grant application is due by the end of January. We were actually, actually already completed the application. It would just be a matter of submitting it before the end of the year, which we can submit at any time, and we should have a board notice sometime in February. Is, is this a uh, interim step of getting full curbside service back available, or is it going to allow us to this, go directly to curbside service? This would allow us to go directly back to curbside service. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, before, if you remember, um, we contracted the trailer yeah. and the long haul with TCF Recycling, which um, when the market crashed in March or February of 2022, that's when we lost the trailer and the, the uh, uh, truck to come pick it up. But the town is equipped with its own 18-wheeler. We already have a walking floor trailer now that we use to haul for our municipal solid waste to the landfill. Um, it would be the same, a very similar operation as to what we do now for, for trash pickup. We would restart that curbside program for recycling. So we would be handling it all in-house as yes. opposed to having a yes. yes. And all that recycling stuff will go to the landfill? No, no. The recycling would go back to the recycling centers up in the Chesapeake area. Okay, so they open the room for the mm -hmm. now? They are. They, the the um, travel time between here and the site was just too far. Us and us in this town of Windsor are very much in the middle of this void where we're not close enough to Greenville and we're not close enough to Chesapeake to long haul our recyclables. And so we, we both are kind of in that middle void. That we're not really close to any of the centers where it makes it financially feasible for them to come pick up the quantities that we would recycle to take back. <coughs> I think the last few months of that in 2020 were upwards of 5,000 per trip just to pick up 15 to 18 tons. Um, one of the, uh, anything else on recycling? Uh, the third item that has been brought to the council's attention is the idea of the dog park. Um, this has been one of the biggest reoccurring public concerns that has been brought to the attention of the town administration is the lack of an established dog park um, for residents. The administration has met with local residents, some of which are here tonight, and I'm sure we'll hear them speak, um, hear their concerns, and have determined that a local dog park would help enhance the quality of life for our residents. Um, initial estimates have shown that roughly $20,000 would help to purchase and install the equipment necessary for said dog park. Do you have any sites in mind? Uh, we, we've looked at about three different locations. Um, a couple were town owned, um, as well as some that the town could rather easily acquire to put a dog park on. And we'll have some input into that location. Yes. Um, if and when the time comes. And, and tonight's not the night to talk about yeah, that. No, I just want to make sure we're not trying to yeah. pick a location yeah. for something no. we haven't been funded yet. Exactly. Now, this is very, this yeah. very much informative of what we saw from the public. These are by no means the final list of what the spending will be. And it's not all inclusive because the, the second installment is 735000 mm -hmm. correct? And um, this eats up, I don't know, approximately half of the leases, 370, so <coughs> not quite half. So everything presented tonight is roughly $345,000 worth of allocations. So of that, there's $390,000 that's uh, still sitting there. I I don't have any injections to the dog park, but I want to make sure we talk about our children at some point. Okay. Know, which I think we'll, we'll hear from residents about that. Yes, yes. Any questions around the dog park idea? Um, the fourth thing that we, uh, we have looked at um, is legal aid to acquire the abandoned railroad properties. I know that that's come up. This is quite a bit of time and effort on behalf of our staff to maintain something that we don't own. We've done this for years and years and years and years. Um, one of the things that we would like to set aside some money on is to see um, um, what it would take for the town to reacquire those those properties, um, starting from 
uh, Paradise Road up near where the um, stop shop and friendly check cashing location is and that extends all the way down to uh, West Queen um, where Dr. Ali's old office was. That would be your west side um, railroad spur and when we talk about the east side railroad spur we're talking about from eat the 300 block of East Freemason down into the 300 block of East King, which comes into the Cotton Mill area. Um, so those are the, the, the two areas that we would like to reach out to our legal um, counsel to, to, to figure out how we could acquire those properties. Um, and, and really the goal behind that is, is we just established the um, most recent bike ped plan with the Kimberly Moore folks at DOT um, starting to acquire some of that property would um, be some of the groundwork that's needed to consider bike trails, um, walking paths, multi-use paths. Sounds like a greenway. Yeah. Greenway. Yeah. yeah. Any questions around that? Um, and the um, last item that's been brought to our attention and also as a result of the um, bike pedestrian path um, was the idea of installing a um, new kayak launch and some land acquisition along Queen Anne Creek. Um, there is um, some property located near Paxton Lane that is on the north tributary um, of Queen Anne Creek, the tributary that runs down to Eden Bay. Um, um, and one of the pieces for the bike path included uh, a kayak launch and uh, multi-use path starting up near Paxton and actually um, following that waterway all the way down um, to King Street. And so um, um, if approved, um, the town would, would actually install um, uh, a kayak launch and purchase property there uh, on that north tributary. Um, which makes sense when we've had some discussions around how we explore Queen Anne and how we start that process. And if you remember when we did the bulkhead work uh, on the East Water Street section, part of that was the installation of the new kayak launch, which has primarily been the entrance and the exit of, the, of, of your traffic. This would give you a, a northern um, entry point to kayak down and actually exit back at the Elizabeth Van Moore Park um, kayak launch. Now when you say Paxton Lane, are you talking about back there on the parish farm? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that not a little back there? Yeah. Yeah. With a kayak? I want to take the first kayak ride to California. I want to get We'll park at your house and walk down and get no, 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 no. <laughs> Corey, are you able to uh, get up under the bridge, uh, the Highway 32 bridge there, that there's enough clearance? Yeah. And so the... Um, uh, are they going to sell you enough land so you can park and do all this stuff down there? <laughs> if council approves. If it's, if it's something that council would like to see. Um, this is very important to us. This is something that's been brought up. Um, Dwayne and I have been working very closely uh, with the governor's office for the um, Hometown Strong initiative um, this upcoming year of 2023, be the year of the trail, which also includes bike trails, but also includes kayak trails. And so one of the things that we're starting to consider is how we can make our waters more accessible and become uh, a part of that kayak and trail system. It's about so a mile and a half from the Paxton down here. I would say so. Yes, sir. Any questions? Well, since we're acquiring paid, would, would that be a better option? Or? Well, we can question. We consider the um, this it's not, being the it's not far enough up the creek. Mm -hmm. Not far enough up the creek. I mean, yeah, this is like the beginning, and the age is kind of at the end. Yeah. So this is you have a path that goes, you know, both ways. I mean, I think we probably will have a launch at some point or a stop or something closer to um, Sound Side <coughs> yeah. Drive. That would be the yeah. most west eastern point well, of that. My mind's here. Right. I can remember. It's been a long 
long time since I've been down there, you're gonna have to dig that whole section out to make it bigger, because that wasn't much of a, because as a child, we used to dip herrings down there, man. <laughs> so it, it, ain't, it ain't that wide for folks to, to be going down there. And that's the magic of kayaks. The, the, uh, um, the tributary has been um, really uh, well maintained um, by our soil and conservation water, uh, soil and water conservation folks. And it doesn't take a whole lot of water to float a kayak. And so we've actually, we have been down and, and, and took a look at the property and I, I feel like it's something that we can, can get some boats in. And so up until this point, those are the five um, items that have been brought to the town administration or to the council um, that we have had some uh, conversations around. <laughs> And that's, that's really all I have to report for those items. Okay, so having said that, we'll open the floor <coughs> to public, public comment and suggestions for our community. And we've got about 20 people to sign up to, to speak. So we're going to try to hold it to five minutes per person. So try not to go over five minutes and we will be down. So uh, the first person on the list is, I can't read that name. Alton McComp on uh, 145 East Gale Street. Okay. Good evening, and I'd like to thank the mayor and council and Corey for having this open forum for input. I think it's a great idea. I appreciate the opportunity to be part of it. Uh, we all know that dogs love to run free with their buddies, and the dog park is a perfect and safe place for them to do it. But dog parks are also uh, an amenity for dog owners and for the community. Dog owners get to meet people from other parts of the community that they might not ever see, and the community, through this amenity, uh, is able to attract energetic, visitors and new residents and these people uh, really seek out communities with dog parks and when they are in town they spend money and they pay taxes. Uh, as uh, Corey had uh, mentioned the dog park has been a priority in Edenton for some time now uh, the 2017 and 2020 vision statement of the town council referred to uh, a dog park and in the 2020 vision statement it was uh, uh, the uh, wording was identify land for development of a dog park and seek grant funding opportunities. So here's a grant funding opportunity and uh, we were a group of volunteers that just uh, got together in uh, October to advocate for a dog park. And um, there are several of us here. Caitlin Bond is our photographer. And Tom Abbott is our researcher. And Blaine Sharrick is our social media and um, survey specialist. And he'll be speaking uh, also. And uh, we, are, we are getting out to the community and trying to bring in um, some information about uh, whether the community actually supports a dog park and if so, uh, what the amenities would be and what the safety concerns are, et cetera. So Blaine will be talking more about that. Uh, we envision uh, an ongoing relationship with the Friends of the Edenton Dog Park, and uh, our pledge is to form a 501c3 to raise funds for amenities for that park, and um, the role of the town would be to provide land, <coughs> uh, shaded land, and fence and provide basic amenities such as drinking water, and 
Dog Comfort Station. <coughs> we also uh, agree uh, that we would like to continue uh, to offer our support for the dog park as volunteers if there are projects that need to be done there. Uh, we, we will pitch in. And we concur with the $20,000 uh, figure that the town has come up with for a park. Uh, and from what we have looked at, we uh, understand that that would be sufficient to fence a safe park with double entry for safety and a separate area for small dogs. To ensure safety, uh, we uh, are going to request that dogs be licensed and vaccinated uh, in order to use the park that rules be posted at the park and that owners um, be responsible for their dog's behavior in the park. The question of location of the park is one that we've heard um, the most, and I understand that you all are concerned about that too. And uh, we have uh, looked at some of the town properties and uh, one, one of the ones that uh, initially uh, fits fits the uh, the uh, description for uh, requirements is the 2.39 Filberts Creek Park, uh, but we understand that there would be some environmental and legal considerations. Uh, done done. Okay. Um, okay. So we will do whatever we can to make a dog park happen wherever uh, ultimately it's recommended, and. Uh, does Blaine come next, or is he? Yeah, uh, Blaine comes next. Okay, uh, Blaine Sharrock. 215 Lakeside Drive. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. uh, I wanted to take five minutes on this, but thank you all for your consideration <coughs> of, uh, of, of what we consider to be an important amenity for the, uh, for the community. <coughs> Basically, a few things that we've been able to do on very short notice is to uh, get a petition circulating in the downtown, which we currently have over 150 signatures supporting um, uh, said dog park. Also, our social media is very active with over, uh, over 100 members at this point, and we did generate a survey, which is part of that. Um, about 26 respondents, and shockingly, 100% of them were in favor of the dog park. Um, the other thing about that, though, which we did find interesting, is that um, most of the folks that wanted the dog park said they wanted it to ensure the safety of, of their dogs. So that was a, a huge consideration uh, for them. And drinking water was the uh, amenity that was uh, requested the most. And 87% said they'd be willing to contribute to the uh, creation and maintenance of said park. So it's a start, but I think it's a positive response from the community. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. And the next is Tom Abbott. I'm a net worker and um, also a dog owner. I look at the dog park as a as a stepping stone to provide dog owners in this community with further enhancements, training, um, <coughs> make it a, a centerpiece for those who would like to work with their dogs a little bit more. My background is that more years ago than I could, I could tell, I finished my Basset Hound, Patrick, in his utility degree at the Kennel Club of Philadelphia. Getting a dog through that highest level of obedience training was not easy, especially not for a Basset. I also trained with the Connecticut State Police Dog Procurement Officer, uh, my bloodhound, Pippa, and we were a regular search and rescue team in southern Rhode Island and eastern, eastern Connecticut when I was stationed up there with the Coast Guard. Um, I look at the possibility, and let me just talk about enhancements. Um, we'll pass it around. Okay. Um, I look at the possibility of a 
an agility course over there or training so our dogs can stay as healthy or healthier than, than we. Um, I look at a place for obedience training and a place where we could get regular local trainers in the area to, to come in and work with our, with our, um, with our, our dogs and the dog owners. Um, I feel like that, that having a park just to be able to socialize uh, our dogs is a great start. But let's, let's make this something where we could actually improve the quality of life for dog owners by, by offering other services that this dog park might, might do. You know, I, I, I have a, a cattle dog and an Australian Shepherd, and um, they're probably smarter than me. And they, uh, they're exuberant and they require a lot of training. And to have a, a place where they can run free, because black dogs in the summer around here don't do a very good job uh, with the heat, so they've gained a little weight. Anyway, this is what I look at. I also, in past life, have been a grant writer and a technical communicator, and um, I fully support the, uh, the idea of getting grants that we could use to, to enhance our dog park a little bit more, and I'd be willing to work and, and come out of semi-retirement to, uh, to help write them. Thank you, sir. And the next one on our list is Adrian Heath. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I am a dog owner and I love dogs. However, I'm here to represent the youth and the neglected North Edenton. I think we need park and recreation and enhanced public spaces for our youth and for the residents of North Edenton. We have an abandoned um, shopping mall that something should be done with. Um, it's unattractive. Uh, there's a lot of litter and unattractive business uh, businesses up in the north. We should use some of that money to beautify the north part of Edenton. Quality of life is not the best up there. I'm new to the town, so I didn't quite realize what I was getting into when I bought a home up there. I do also pay taxes, and a lot of people, even if they buy a pop in the shops up there, they pay taxes too, and I think a dog park is a nice idea, but uh, public money spent on youth, my son, who said he had nothing to do on Sunday, what could he do that did require him to drive to Chesapeake or Elizabeth City, you know, a park that has ro rollerblade things, skating, outdoor gym type workout stuff for youth between 13 and young people 30 to 13 to 30. What are they really doing in Edenton? Idle hands can get you in trouble. So I think that's a, a better investment in the youth of the town and um, taking care of North Edenton. Freemason Park, which is very run down. Morris Place has a park which is totally neglected. There are parks over on MLK that are overgrown and dangerous. I think their quality of life means something. I can't, I, I know dog owners think their dogs are more um, important than, you know, the black youth down the street in the north part, but we need some money spent on our youth and invested in the quality of life in North Edenton. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Heath. And the next is Regina Bond. Evening, Mayor, Councilman, uh, community. I want to speak also on the youth and the parks. I think it's very important because our children is the future. And it takes a village to help raise a child. And I feel like the violence and all the things that's going on in our town can be eliminated if we could focus on our children and make our living areas better, like our parks. In Medicare, um, the park over there, like it's like wooded. 
if a pervert is there, they can just run off with a child. It's no fence. It's no type of protection there for our children. They can run out, get a ball. It's just like nobody cares. So I guess in, in a child's mind frame, like, well, they don't care about us. So we can just do what, go follow the people that we feel that care about us. I feel like if money was invested in outreach programs and nonprofit programs that can help with our youth, we could have a better, make model citizens, get better graduate, you know, people graduating from school and stuff, going to college and come back, opening business and stuff. I just feel like we need to invest in our church more, and it starts in our community. Um, we just had an event um, in October, and we had a vision board, and the children signed, like, what do they want to see in Edison? And some of the things they want to see in Edison, basically, a community center, somewhere they can go and be themselves, um, counseling, because we also know in these neighborhoods, it's a lot of social issues that goes there that are not being identified in the schools and stuff. Teachers do, do their part, but it has to come. They need help from everybody. And um, I just feel like we should invest in these parts and some outreach programs that will help these kids in our community. Thank you. Thank you. And the next is David Furlong from uh, 301 North Wall Street. Sure. We've heard some uh, talk tonight about the railway turn, uh, the rail right away turn into trails. I'd like to also suggest that we look at the Filbert Creek watershed. Uh, I have uh, education and work experience in water quality, wetlands, flooding, and the constructed wetlands up along uh, North Granville there at uh, Hicks. Uh, the park there looks like it came on with a very good intention, but it seems to have fallen into considerable disrepair. Uh, been on the bridges there, or at least one of the bridges that was uh, pretty uh, questionable whether you can make it all the way across the boards is pretty rotten. Uh, there's a lot of trash and debris out there that's hard to get to because it, uh, <coughs> the, the riparian areas are not being managed. I understand this is uh, some of a partnership with the Corps of Engineers. There were two uh, uh, members of the Corps out, out there today uh, surveying the site. I'm not sure. I just learned of this. I'm not sure what their role is. But I believe if we could upgrade that park, replace all the wooden structures that are in poor shape, uh, improve, improve, update the signage, and second, connect that Filberts Creek Park with a greenway along Filberts Creek all the way down its entire length until we get to the park uh, along Queen Street there by the freeze, across the street from the freeze. This would offer a good urban, uh, accessible, <coughs> natural area, perhaps have some signage, uh, benches along this trail, uh, to talk about the importance of water quality, uh, litter, uh, trash, personal responsibility for maintaining our environment uh, in, in an area that seems to be somewhat overlooked and not, not easily seen or accessible. If it's not easily seen, it's not easily, it's, it's ready to easy for it to become uh, ignored in the district area. So I'd like to encourage you looking into that for improving that wetland. Uh, it would also help with the trading drop to the shopping center park. Uh, reduce uh, trash and improve uh, wildlife access, particularly birds along that corridor. Uh, so we have an opportunity to have some educational outreach for the, the natural environment of Edenton. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, the next is all of Warren. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abella Gordon Warren. I live at 602 North Oakham Street. I was a 2007-2008 recipient of the housing that the town approved for me to get. And I Tim Phelps built my home in 2009. But everything was smooth. Um, the only problem I have is after they did the house, then they came back and redid the driveway. The driveway is causing a flood to come down on my, in the yard. I didn't have that problem at first. Okay, so it ain't like it was a slope. So now they came and they, it's great. So when the water, when it rains, the water comes from down, north over down that end, from the other end, and all of it just comes down on me. And, um, excuse me, okay. 
So I would like to, I'm asking the town, I'm asking and I'm begging the town to please redo the problem. I believe that they caused because they wanted to come back and redo the driveways. They wanted to put curves to beautify, they say, but I've been complaining from 2010 till now, and I haven't had any results yet. And also, the house beside me, 600, I've been asking, asking, please do something about that house. It's an abandoned house. It's been abandoned for years. But now, through my knowledge, I found out that uh, the house has been sold, and I didn't know anything about it. And it's just, that's, that's all. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And next is Ray Harrell. <coughs> Ray Harrell. Hello. 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 My name is Ray Harrell. I've lived here all my life. Most of my family has. I know some of y'all right here in this room. Um, I'm here to talk about the kids. Um, it seems like to me that a lot of people are concerned about dogs. Um, I don't think we need a dog park. I think a dog park is kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you. Um, a kayak option, I don't think we need that. Anybody that wants to take a kayak anywhere can go to a state-funded wildlife ramp and put off just like anybody else can. A kayak weighs but 30 pounds, dig it up, put it in the water, just like anybody else. And the railroad taking that up, making a uh, what y'all say a bikeway, walkway, whatever. Um, in my opinion, most people aren't gonna have their kids up and down that from Paradise all the way to the old Cotton Mill, running them down that street. Um, there's gonna be other traffic there. The chief of police sitting out there, and I told him the same thing I'm going to tell y'all. That's going to be a runway for people to get away from people like him. Um, I, preferably, would like to see more money go towards more recreation stuff for kids. Um, a new recreation department, new ball fields, new lighting. Um, me, just like a lot of others, there's a lot of parents in the other room over there that I've seen countless nights and stuff like that, soccer practice and everything else, would like the same thing. Um, so for dog parks and kayak stuff and mess like that, it sounds like to me y'all are fixing things up for, not for people of the future, but for people that's here visiting non-resident people, stuff like that. Uh, like I said, I would like to see this town put more money into kids. Um, the future of this town, the future of this state, the future of this country. So if we can't have nice things then, I know that ain't well, I ain't gonna support no nice things from the dog park or a kayak thing or a walkway that Probably no one's going to use. Um, that's just kind of what I got to say about that. I'm here for the youngins. I got two youngins who play sports. They love the death. I love watching them. And I would like to see them have some nice things and be in a nice area. Appreciate it. Right, thank you, sir. All right, next is Pat Grother. Susan, Susan Thank you. I rise to speak in favor 
of investment in reinstating our recycling program. Um, it is something we all want in our town, and it provides opportunities that might have that, um, might been barely touched on when you were describing bringing our recycling program in-house. It happens that these days, garbage, what we humans throw away, are, it, it has become our world's most abundant natural resource. And it's an underutilized natural resource, largely because of lack of infrastructure. So we have a huge opportunity here in making this modest investment in getting a trailer so that we can reinstate our recycling program and it will make it possible for us to seize future opportunities to make use of that natural resource, I believe. So I think you're gonna have a market for our garbage in this case. I also want to take just a sec to say about the kayak trail that I have kayaked up to, Pi to Paxton Lane with the kayaking group that goes at sunset every Wednesday, and it's lovely. And our protecting that and other waterfront property is very, very important. Naming it a kayaking trail that requires, as the previous speaker noted, minimal infrastructure because a kayak is so light, um, it, it can save that waterfront that waterfront wilderness, which we will continue to need as the waters rise and as we have more and more dramatic climate events, weather events in, in uh, this waterfront area. So I endorse two ideas y'all have already got on the docket, and I thank you for bringing these ideas. Okay, thank you. Next up is Carl, Steve Carl. And uh, Mary Scott Hagler will be on board. Next. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I'm a member of the Mayor's uh, Litter Recycling and Environment Committee. And um, there was an article in WRAL's uh, online news today about Wake County's dump filling up very, very shortly. And I have three trash cans in my backyard, one for glass, one for aluminum cans, and one for other containers. And if I just put them on the street, they go into the town's trash truck, and they go to the dump. And it, you know, very soon, we're gonna be needing another dump, a landfill. And landfills are expensive, and they have to be lined, they have to be, you know, I mean, it's not just taking it out of the woods and, and burying it someplace. Uh, the recycling trailer will actually eventually save the town money. So it, it is a, a wise uh, investment. And, and I, I really think that that's one of the things that the town really needs to you know, put in back into place and get curbside recycling um, back into the, the, the mainstream. Um, something that wasn't mentioned uh, that I'm going to add to your list is we have a beautiful waterfront here. Uh, there are times of the year when we can't use it, or we should not use it. It becomes toxic. And uh, I think that the town needs to invest in some type of uh, continuous monitoring program. Uh, there are companies out there that put, uh, that create, they, have, they sell uh, devices that can be put out on one of the buoys that can wirelessly <coughs> send uh, information about what the, the blue-green algae toxin levels are to uh, on, you know, to Ms. Goodwin. And, you know, these are types of things. We have a beautiful waterfront, but, I mean, all of you probably, you know, had times when you wondered why nobody uses it. And uh, I would like to encourage in that type of also I mean, that's a major community type of thing. It would benefit everybody. I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. All right, next is Mary Scott Hagler and Lisa Laws on board.
Good evening, Mayor and Town Council. Thank you all for the opportunity to speak today. If it's okay with you, I would like to invite uh, some other folks who came um, that I will be speaking on behalf of into the room. Is that okay? Good. All right, y'all come on in. Your strength in numbers. You might want to go stand along the wall over there by Virginia. And this all started uh, this morning at about 10 o'clock. Um, when I asked a few people if they would be willing to come show the council that there are a lot of Edenton residents who care about what's going on with the rec department. So when they get in, everybody gets in, I'll start. Hey, are y'all in? I think yeah. so. All right, good evening again, Council and Mayor. I'm Mary Scott Hagler, a lifelong Edentonian and an, a very active participant in our county recreation department for the past 10 years. I had my own stint in the rec department well over 40 years ago, but unlike my own children, I scored more daisies and cartwheels than goals and points. Um, I will point out that I played on the exact same fields that my children are playing on today, and I have not seen one single infrastructure improvement that I'm aware of as far as bathrooms, fields, lights. I may be wrong there, but it, it pretty much is exactly uh, what I remember. I'm here today with a good number of other residents of Edenton to advocate for the youth in this town. Our beloved community, community is well known as a retirement destination, and I'd like to see us promote with equal energy and vigor that we're a wonderful place to raise a family. I think you can see here tonight that I'm not alone. I'd like to, perhaps boldly, request that the remaining $390,000 that's not been identified on your agenda be directed to our parks and recreation for facility improvement. If we were to receive this appropriation, one half would be used to spruce up existing neighborhood parks, which has already been mentioned. Morgan Park, Paxton Lane, and Stratford Hawthorne Roads. This number is realistic, research has been done. The condition of existing park facilities is a factor in applying for grant monies, and these shabby neighborhood parks are in need of attention. I'd like to see the other portion of the funds be used to secure a site for a future unified location for our Parks and Recreation Department. If you visit Perquimans, Bertie, Martin, Beaufort, Currituck, and other Eastern North Carolina communities, you will see that our facilities are downright embarrassing. In comparison, our barely working lights, non-existent scoreboards, inadequate parking, two small concession stands, and downright nasty bathrooms are pitiful. Edenton Chowan has an awful lot to be proud of, but you sure wouldn't know it looking at our recreation facilities. Our county commissioners are quick to point out Northern Rec to any critics, and that is a wonderful, much-needed facility for folks who live in Tyner in the northern part of our county and for our middle school students. But it simply does not address the recreation needs of our population. In recent years, the county has been responsible for the recreation department, but they obviously need help. I'm sure many of you are aware of the recent effort to bring the Northern Rec tennis courts back from total disrepair. Is it time for a change with the way our parks and recreation department is handled? Perhaps, but that's a topic for a different day. I'm here to call on the town to step forward. This money is an opportunity for the town to step up and help where the county can clearly use it. Let's all advocate for the acquisition of land in a convenient location without a lot of conditions and strings like the Red Bank's property has. I'd like to see a unified effort to make major facility improvements, and the sooner the better. Let's game up. Our kids are our future, and they darn sure deserve it. These are our future leaders, our future employees, our future employers. They will be our business leaders, our doctors, and our teachers. It's imperative to care for our children, and they deserve better. There are additional funds available for a master plan for recreation. Let's get the wheels in motion on that immediately and use this money with matching grants to secure a physical place. 
We've discussed the spot with plenty of land with limitless potential, and once we have a plan in a place, additional grants become more accessible. I have one last sentence. Our community has done a wonderful job of recruiting retirees, promoting tourism, and preserving history. Tonight, we are here advocating for the youth of our community that call Edenton home. I'm asking you to use these remaining funds to show them that you care. All right, y'all can all. <laughs> Mary Scott, can we keep the speaker? Hey, how are you? Sure. Keep the supporters too. They couldn't be here tonight. Yeah, and I passed out to you. I told you that I posted something quickly at 10 o'clock this morning. And there are probably 40 people standing in this room. And that list that I gave you has 49 other people who said, I had no intentions to make a list. But they said, please put my name on the list. It's a school board meeting. High school is planning for Clemens. Um, church basketball starting at Rocky Hawk. There's a lot going on tonight. So given time, I think you would see triple the number here easily. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, the next is Lisa Laws and uh, Prince Lonnie Dablo will be on the deck. Hello, Lisa Laws. Uh, my husband and I are new to town. We have property um, in the county just like outside of Edenton, but we have town services. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I have lived many places and visited many places. Edenton is beautiful. This is where we chose to be um, for a long, long time. I have noticed that North Edenton is in dire need of improvement. I think everybody that takes the wrong exit, so to speak, uh, doesn't see the beauty of Edenton. They see North Edenton, and I think that it needs improvement and maybe this fabulous park that is needed could be located there. And that would improve the surrounding area as well. Um, I am sad that our young people um, do not have a recreation center, perhaps the shopping center that is um, abandoned and pathetic looking could be used for as a recreation center. Um, I am a mother and I'm also a dog owner. Um, I believe that the waterfront park many times is overrun by dogs. So the waterfront park that is so beautiful and, and a, a very prideful place in Edenton could be improved by having a small dog park somewhere. Um, and as far as funding it, I know that their uh, children are more important than dogs, even though I've always had dogs too. Um, many places that I have been they charge initially for your first year of membership to the dog park. And perhaps that could be done, say, $50 a year, and a dog gets a tag or the owner gets a bracelet, and it helps fund whatever may be needed for the dog park that would not take money away from human beings. Um, as far as the wetlands go, I have worked with the uh, Chawan Edenton Environmental Group uh, we had a festival in the Waterfront Park in September. It was very successful. We uh, are all about education and protecting the wetlands, the water, um, and I think that whatever is built or improved in Edenton should always keep our waters uh, in mind. I have to say I have been extremely impressed with how clean, uh, in other words, no trash, the uh, river, the bay, uh, the sound, I just can't believe how clean it is. I have been so many places where everywhere you go, there's trash, bottles, uh, plastic bags floating in the water, grocery bags in the trees. I don't see that here. I'm amazed. We have a waterfront lot. In a year and a half, I have seen one cupcake wrapper. That is it. <laughs> and we are there constantly. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next is Lori Dablo, and on deck is Dabo Davis. I'm 
Deborah Davis representing New Edenton Housing Authority, and I would like to make um, two suggestions or recommendations with funds that you have. The first would be possibly a pilot or maybe a trial uh, emergency rental assistance program. We knew that existed with COVID and funds were sent to the state, but it was poorly um, executed. And individuals who do need emergency rental assistance to not be evicted have been going to churches. <coughs> and after COVID, churches' fundings were limited also. So it could be something like maybe $5,000 with a maximum of $200 each, one time, never again, and can just be a trial to see how it works. $200 would definitely assist about 25 people, and you don't even have to use all of that for the year. The next thing I would like to recommend is a program I worked with in Virginia, and it was a low-income rental, not rental, low income down payment assistance program. And we provided two to $3,000 per person low income that was buying their first home in the locality. Um, a condition was placed on that, however, if that home was sold or the person didn't keep it, they had to repay or if it was sold, the town or whoever gave the money did get that back. So two programs, emergency rental assistance, that can be a pilot, and definitely a low income first time home buyer down payment assistance. I believe I read in the census a while back that your average age of your town resident was really in their 40s. And I'm older, so I appreciate you promoting and marketing seniors. I won't see that for again. But we do want to attract other families to come here, and possibly even my families at the Housing Authority assist them in stepping up and having ownership in property here in town. And I thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Mm -hmm. All right, next up is Karen Maston. And then uh, on board will be Julie Toomey. Karen Maston. Looks like Julie coming. No, Toomey's coming. Miss Toomey's coming. Miss Toomey's coming. This is coming. Karen Maston. Is Karen not here? <laughs> She's the Is Karen not here? She might have been the one that um, okay. stepped out. Uh, good evening. I want to. Uh, my name is Julie Tunney. I thank you for inviting input tonight. Um, and you've heard a lot of great ideas, and I'm just going to throw um, my opinion in as well. Um, I am agree with many of the folks, especially when it came to support for our youth and for recreational um, opportunities. Of course, if we could first take the funds, invest them, and work off the investments, which is probably not allowed, to me that would be the number one idea for sustainability. Um, and in everything we do, I think we need to consider sustainability of whatever it is that we're doing. Um, opportunities for recreation, I think you know the benefits to health and wellness, be it mental health or physical health. Um, and so therefore, I'm a big proponent of that, let alone keeping our youth actively engaged in positive activities. So there are many ideas out there for what we can do. Um, I encourage you to think through that. I encourage you to, if you decide to go the recreation route and um, consider youth, that we get their opinions on um, what would be best. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, next is Gwen Brown and with Julia Townsend on board. Good afternoon, everybody. 
everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. Uh, yeah. So, first of all, I want to say wow. I want to say wow to the group that came up to represent our children. And to see our children walk through the door, put smiles on my face. Since 1995, I have been fighting this fight with you all for years. And it seems like we just can't get to where we need to be. I hear all this stuff, quality of life, and coming on Paxson Lane with all of these um, kayaks and all this stuff. Take that kayak by that playground. On that playground, there's a, a swing that's been there for 56 years or more, because that's how old I am. It's been there that long. Rested and all. 56 years of a swing. There's a basketball court and a swing. That is it, y'all. Come on. We're taxpayers. Mm -hmm. We're community people. Yes, the dog park sounds wonderful. For those of you who own dogs, I don't. But it's wonderful for you all. I get all that. All I'm asking for is to have the same quality for my children, for my grandchildren, if you all want for these dogs. A swing set that has been on Paxson Lane for over 56 years. Come on, y'all. We're taxpayers. Where's our money? What is our money doing for us? What is our money doing for us? Come on. Y'all are with me. I need all y'all to take a ride down Paxson Lane. All y'all. And see what I see. And see what I see. Thanks for the rose. The rose look real good. Dishes look real good. But let's work on our playground. I would like to take my grandkids to the park to swing. But not on that 56 year old plus swing set that's down there. Make us look like what Queen Anne looked like. Make us look like what cemetery looked like. Make us look like what anything looked like besides a 56 year old swing set. We would like some walkways. We would like to see something besides a 56 year old swing set. Y'all can think about that tonight when y'all go to bed. <laughs> a 56 year old swing set is what we have. Again, a 56 year old swing set. I don't want to say that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next up is Julia Townsend. Julia Townsend. Hello. I'm Julia Townsend. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to listen to all of us. Um, every week I bicycle, walk, walk a dog, jog on the streets of Edenton. At least once a month I ride a bicycle way out in the county so you know what my interests are. But before I get on to that, I just want to say, I drove down Paxton Lane today. Uh -huh. I didn't even know, I didn't, had never been down there before. And it is a beautiful street at the end of it. It was gorgeous. So if that possibility of the kayak launch were to happen, that would just be wonderful. I did notice the park really caught my, I was kind of shocked to see it. I agree with all the comments of the previous speaker. If the garbage and the old mattresses and old TVs were picked up, uh, down that road too, that would really be a smashing addition to the kayak opportunities here. Um, let's see, before, so I'd like to start with the uh, Kimmel and Horn report that came out this year. I've spent quite a, Kimley and Horn report, I spent quite a bit of time studying it. Um, was glad to hear that our town didn't pay for it. Uh, it uh, has a lot of information, but it's very hard to read it. I hope that they will uh, present a com combined plans and suggestions. It is very hard even to, to study that book. You have to flip a page to see what the proposals are. For me, it is very important that a pedestrian or a cyclist can get from the waterfront to food line and back safely and as far as I know, these key intersections of the post office, Walgreens, uh, crossing back and forth on Virginia Road have already been approved. Uh, ideally, this could be a circle using other suggestions in that report. 
that you could go up to Food Line and come back a different way uh, on West, West Queen. Uh, additionally, if we could get to the dollar store down Queen Street and back safely, either walking or on a bicycle. I understand uh, a few years ago there was an attempt to widen Queen Street, which was not uh, approved. I don't know if that argument could be discussed again. Uh, one factor that we realize is that very important roads in our town are state-owned. Uh, Route 32, Broad Street, MLK Boulevard. So any plans that happen for the town, I hope that there is someone keeping their eye on the overall vision. For example, if you improve sidewalks near the food line, and then later the idea of the multi-use trail on the opposite side of food line, if they are not in sync, if they're not planned together, then it doesn't really work very well. Um, I would also support improvements on Broad Street, considering reducing it to one lane, reducing the speed limit, making a bike lane there. The argument might be that there just aren't enough bicycles to use Broad Street, but I think if there were space to ride on Broad Street, you would see more bicycles on Broad Street. I would encourage no trails, as were suggested, on the creeks or the waterways, as it can damage the habitats. Uh, I would encourage speed bumps or humps on the road I live on, on Baton Road, Park Avenue. Uh, more cameras for safety. I'm not sure about sharing cameras with the private cameras. There's a discussion of sharing uh, individuals' cameras with the police cameras. Uh, I think there is some overall education that needs to happen. I see cyclists riding down the left-hand side of the road, and I think that can be improved with just signage so that people know bikes need to be on the right side of the road. Signage would also be for the littering problem that we have. Just this morning I saw huge bags of fast food on North Broad and diapers on the side of the road. So if there were more signs, maybe harking back to the 70s, the big kitchen signs. Uh, and I've made a, a written proposal in the past, I never heard back about signs that could be painted by kids at the Boys and Girls Club, saying kitchen, and every year, every two years, they're repainted with different colors, so we get the new generation thinking about not littering in the streets. And But those things would have to be enforced, so there have to be real, real punishments for that. And lastly, I would just like to say I like to I support very much all of the suggestions about North Edenton, and I encourage whoever said that to get those ideas in writing. We're all encouraged to submit things in writing by the end of this month, uh, and I'd like to see specifics. Anything with a rec center sounds like it's it's going to have to have uh, staff working there, which is like a long term investment. Um, very interested to hear more about that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right, next is Matt Womble. Matt Womble. Hello, Council, uh, town. It's really good to see everybody come out to advocate for ideas. Uh, my name is Matt Womble. I'm uh, new to town, only about a year. Uh, my involvement in the town so far has really been around the rec department. So I want to just put my voice and uh, advocate for uh, rec department funding, but specifically for community voting. And really what that looks like is access to the town dock area, access to uh, voting opportunities, but mainly mentorship. A lot of folks have uh, talked about uh, children needing something to do, safe places to go. Uh, we have a very active and beautiful community that um, <coughs> is represented uh, by all walks of life, all kinds of people. And if we can open that up to uh, access to the water, uh, living in beautiful Edenton, I think that would be all of our dream. We've seen the sailboats out in the water, had a lot of discussion about other uh, aspects of water use, uh, but that's where my heart is. So in the last year, I've been a volunteer with the rec department. Uh, we are in the process of rebuilding the sailing program through the rec department. <coughs> And through a public-private partnership with the Rec Department and the Edenson Yacht Club, we've been able to raise money for 10 uh, new boats uh, for the community. Uh, so this is uh, 10 uh, sailboats that are really targeting kids to get them out on the water, to, to teach them how to sail, to teach life skills, 
And uh, that's, a, that's a gift, really, of, of donors in this community to want to see that happen. Uh, that's the beginning. There's a lot of need and opportunity. Uh, before ask, uh, you all have a very difficult job and responsibility to take money and put it to good use, whether it's this funding or otherwise. Um, the ask is really around the rec department funding and uh, support for these kind of activities. Obviously, there are other needs that are in competition with this, but having a community boating program with access to waterfront um, launch areas where kids are safe to, to be trained and taught, that's really what we're advocating for. And a, a lot of members of the um, rec department team that have been volunteering to teach kids are here, as well as members of the yacht club. So I just want to acknowledge their presence. Um, thank you for the opportunity and um, appreciate everything that you all do for the town. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That is the last person that we have that signed up to speak tonight. <coughs> uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, bringing to us your concerns, and I assure you that uh, these concerns will be taken into consideration. The uh, recreation department is very high on our list. I, I know that, and uh, so thank each and every one of you for. What you brought to us tonight is all be taken into consideration. Before you have anything else. So, yeah. All right, having said all that, we'll, I'll take a motion to salute. Second. Okay. Uh, motion to second. Meeting is adjourned.